how you can use your applique tool in Genome Digitizer Pro MB version 3 or the Plain Genome Digitizer Pro version 3 and it works in the same way in Digitizer Pro version 2 and 1. If you own Digitizer Pro version 1 or 2 you need to go to Machine which you'll find in the top toolbar select machine model and go and pick whichever machine that you use if you've got the version 3 use your machine filter in the top toolbar here click on the blue chevron it opens the drop down menu you choose whichever machine it is that you use please set your toolbar or your machine filter Otherwise, when you come to save your design, you will get messages that say hoop is not supported. Then select your hoop. And I'm using the AF. These combined, when you save your file, make certain that that stitch file has the necessary information for your machine and will tell it what size hoop you are using and also whether you are using the old GEF format or the new GEF format. That's why you have to set your machine filter. OK, you use your image drop down menu and you'll find image in the top toolbar, top alpha toolbar. Insert image. Now when you installed your program, it put an embroidery album on your C drive. That's your main hard drive didn't put it with the rest of the program in your program folder. Open your embroidery album. I'm going to bring up Ladybird and tell it open. I also need to blow this up so I can see what I'm doing. In a design like this, I would normally do the head, the body part here, separate from the applique. I wouldn't include it in the applique design. And then I would add the dots later. So that's how I'm going to work. I'm going to pretend I've already digitized the head and this part of the body. I start with a left mouse click. And because I'm digitizing an arc shape, I use a right mouse click next. And you'll see that line is straight. Now watch what happens when I lay the next right mouse click. It's curved that line. It's creating an arc for me. Now, your machine doesn't stitch curved stitches. It can't. Stitches are straight. But what the program does is make certain that it's using the right length of stitch to give you the curved effect. OK, we get down in the corner and you insert a left mouse click. You're going back up a curve again, so use a right mouse click left mouse click there and I'm not going all the way to the top it's too sharp a point and it will create problems with the underlay which are the stitches that the program puts in under the satin stitching there's my arc and there is my applique now if you want to know what these are these are your, uh, your trace line and your tack down. Let's blow that up so as you can see them more clearly. And to magnify the screen, you click on the magnifying glass. And it will double whatever number is in here. Here is my original trace line placement stitch. And that starts up here. And it stitches that shape for me. Then it puts in the tack down, which is this, looks like a blind hemming stitch, here. In a second colour, that makes the machine pause in between. But it starts that stitching out here. It locks the thread in, jumps, and then will travel up to where it wants to begin and start the lockdown then. Then you get the underlay for the satin stitching. And that's what this other thread line is. And 
There it is, just there. And then you get your satin stitching. And that finishes off at the top here. When you've done this, and nothing untoward has gone wrong, and it is possible if you digitize without some magnification, you might cross over your finishing points, and you will end up with some very weird effects. Click on this third icon along from the left on the bottom icon toolbar. Click on that. It's your object details applique. Now in here are your settings for your applique. It's offering you 3 millimeters width satin stitch. Now 3 millimeters may sound a lot to you, but it's actually not. I would prefer 350. Now I know there are people who say, oh my goodness, no, 2 millimeters is way wide enough. Well, no, I'm sorry, it's not. You get a fabric that's not as firmly woven as it should be, like a satin or a sateen or um, these faux suede. They fray and they pull. Applique style, pre-cut or trim in place. I always use pre-cut. Inside is the distance inside your trace line you want this satin stitch to come over. I would rather I had a 50-50. So 50% 50 of my stitch was on my applique fabric and 50 was on my backing fabric. So I tell that, OK. Now I have more chance of that applique fabric now staying in position and not pulling away. And I'm going to quickly show you what happens when you actually stitch it. And I'll slow it down for you. First of all, it puts down your tack down line. Right. Now, this is the one that I stitch onto my applique fabric. When that has stitched, I cut that shape out just outside that stitching line. I then close my design in my machine. I hoop up my backing fabric, I put my hoop on my machine, and I start from scratch, and it puts down the, tack, the placement line. My machine stops anyway for a change of colour. I get my bit of fabric that I've already stitched. I squirt a teeny bit of quilt as adhesive onto it, and I very carefully place it so as it fits that shape. Then put the hoop back onto the machine. I don't try doing it in the machine. My eyesight's not quite good enough anymore to do that. The next thing it does is it stitches that tack down. That looks like a blind hemming stitch. And then it does the final satin stitch outline. And we can speed that up. There we go. Voila. That's that done. OK, now the details. And let's bring the image back. We've got these dots. Well, the easiest way to do them, pick up a colour. And to make a dot, I'm just going to blow this screen up so as you can see it. Place your cursor in the centre of your dot. Depress your left mouse key. Drag the cursor in the general direction that you're going to place the next one. Let go. There is your first dot. Just there. The tool is still selected. Place your cursor in the centre of your next dot. Drag it in the general direction that you want your next one to go. If we go into digitizer mode, there is my jump stitch, long enough for me to trim. That's my exit point. Tool is still selected. I drag the next one, and I let go. This one is just a little bit small, 
So I'm going to make that one a bit bigger, but I don't want it there. So I'm going to highlight that one, and I do that in my objects resequence bar. And if yours doesn't show up, just click on this thing that looks like tumbling baby blocks. And it will appear generally over here. I move mine over here, because that's where I like it. And now I can move that in that shape. I'll move it a bit closer up to the edge there. And then I click into an empty spot in the hoop. But of course, by doing that, I've lost my tool, so I have to go and pick my tool back up. Click into the center of the shape. Drag it, my cursor that is, into the general area that I want to travel in. And then finally, the last one. And I brought it this way because I wanted a long jump so as I could trim it. One applique ladybug. Now, in the next little video, I'll show you how I prefer to do it manually.